Hello and welcome to this Beyond Shakespeare exploring session of the play of the weather by John Haywood, uh, a play in which characters basically talk about the weather. Um, it, I I love this play, and I hope by the end of the session you will you will know why. Um, and uh, to read this play, we have assembled a crack team of readers from many many different countries. Uh, I uh, and I, uh, forsooth, am your am your guest host, uh, Liza Graham, and uh, in the role of the god Jupiter, we have. I, I'm, I'm Steve Lancaster. Lancaster. I'm Steve Longstaff from Lancaster in the UK. And in the role of Mary Report, the Vice, we have. Hi, Lisa Hill Corley, just right outside Washington, D.C., USA. Excellent. Uh, in the role of the merchant and the windmiller, we have... Hi, I'm Eric, and apparently I manipulate darkness, according to Rob. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, this thing, this creature of darkness is Eric, and in the role of the gentleman and the ranger, we have... Myself, Sajana. Um, I'm in London, based in Islington at the moment. Marvellous. Uh, and uh, I neglected to mention that in addition to the role of Jupiter, Stephen will play the water miller. Um, and I'm not Rob Crichton, but don't hold that against me. Um, so, uh, John Haywood, this play is a little bit later than the ones we've been looking at in the evenings. Uh, more, uh, more of Haywood's works will be found uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, and at the podcast channel. There are links in the show notes. Uh, and uh, yeah, this play is a little bit uh, later than some we've been doing. Uh, it's printed in about 1533. Uh, we don't know, uh, he may have written it earlier than that and, and kept revising it until it was printed. Uh, it may have been performed for the king, Henry VIII. Uh, we we will see we will see how it feels um but we open uh with the god jupiter sitting enthroned um and uh in your own time please take it away jupiter <laughs> right far too long has now where to recite the ancient estate wherein ourself hath reigned what honor what lord given us of ev a very right what glory we have had, duly unfeigned, of each creature which duty hath constrained. For above all gods since our father's fall, we, Jupiter, were ever principal. If we so have been, as truth it is indeed beyond the compass of all comparison, who could presume to show for any meed that, so that it might appear to human reason the high renown we stand in at this season? For since that heaven and earth were first create, stood we never in such triumphant estates as we now do. Whereof we will report such part as we see meet for time present, chiefly concerning your perpetual comfort, as the thing self shall prove in experiment, which highly shall bind you on knees lowly bent, solely to honour our highness day by day. And now to the matter, give ear, and we shall say, before our presence in our high parliament, both gods and goddesses of all degrees have late assembled by common assent for the redress of certain enormities. Before our presence in our high parliament, both gods and goddesses of all degrees have late assembled by common assent for the redress of certain enormities bred among them through extremities, abused in each to other of them all, namely, to purpose in these most special. Our foresaid father, Saturn and Phoebus, Aeolus and Phoebe, these four by name, whose nature's not only so far contrarious, but also of malice each other to fain, have long time abused, right far out of frame. The due course of all their constellations to the great damage of all earthly nations which was debated in place said before 
and first has become our father, most ancient, with beard, white as snow, his locks, both cold and hoar, hath entered such matter as served his intent, lording his frosty mansion in the firmament, to air and earth's most precious, purging all humours that are contagious. Albeit he alleges that, of long time past, little hath prevailed his great diligence, Full oft upon earth his fair frost he has cast, all things hurtful to banish out of presence. But Phoebus, intending to keep him in silence when he hath laboured all night in his powers, his glaring beams marreth all in two hours. Now Phoebus to this made no manner answering, whereupon they both then Phoebe defied, each for his part laid in her reproving that by her showers superfluous they have tried, in all that she may their power powers be denied. Whereunto Phoebe made answer, no more than Phoebus, to Staten had made before. And on upon Aeolus all these did flee, complaining their causes, each one a row, and said to compare, none was so evil as he, for when he is disposed, his blasts to blow, he suffereth neither shun sunshine, rain, nor snow. They each against other, and he against all three, thus can these four in no manner agree which seen in himself, and further considering the same to redress was cause of their assemble. And also that we, evermore being, beside our puissant power of deity, of wisdom and nature so noble and so free, from all extremities the mean dividing, and peace and plenty each thing attempering, they have, in conclusion, wholly surrendered into our hands, as much as concerning all manner weathers by them engendered the full of their powers for term everlasting, to set such order as standeth with our pleasing, which thing, as of our part, no part required, but of all their parts, right, humbly desired to take upon us. Whereto we did assent, and so in all things, with one voice agreeable, we have clearly finished our foresaid parliament to your great wealth, which shall be firm and stable, and to our honour far inestimable, well, since their powers as ours added to our own, who can we say know us as we should be known? But now, for fine, the rest of our intent, wherefore as now we hither are descended, is only to satisfy and content all manner of people which have been offended by any weather meet to be amended, upon whose complaints, declaring their grief, we shall shape remedy for their relief. And to give knowledge for their hither resort, we would this afford proclaim to be to all our people by someone of this sort uh, who we list to choose here amongst all ye wherefore each man advance and we shall see which of you is most meet to be our crier brother okay um, uh, even though i said i wouldn't i'm gonna pause slightly there because i would like to i i uh F just for our hearers, Stephen, if you can recap what just happened. <laughs> I mean, what I just said? Yes. Yeah. Uh, four, four gods to do with the weather have been having a Barney because the, you know, the frost is making beautiful patterns and then the sun comes out and messes them all up. And everybody hates the wind because the wind messes everything else up. And they're, they're so busy arguing that they, they bring me in as the arbitrator and I've made my decision, and it's brilliant, and I need lots of honour and glory for doing this. And that's the setup. So basically, all the weather now gods... over to the weather. <laughs> all, all the weather gods have put you in charge of the weather now. Yeah, I think so. But I, I, was, t I was too busy trying to work out where the hell the full stops were. <laughs> yeah. You run out of breath. It's te the way it's punctuated um, yeah. there. It's terrible because you think you've come to the end of a sentence and then it just carries on for another line and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wh whoever um, whoever acted this role must have had quite a voice and quite a, you know, not just a presence, but, but you know, good breath and good. Mm -hmm. um, so the last thing Jupiter says, if I'm reading this correctly, is that he's going to hear, hear petitions from people who ask him what the weather should be, right? Uh, choosing somebody 
We shall see which of you is most meet to be our crier. I don't know what the crier is. The, the stanza before that, though, saying, okay. um, we, we must satisfy and content all manner people which have been offended by any weather. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, so basically, he's 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 opening the customer complaints line. Right. Have um, you been affected by weather which wasn't your fault? Call <laughs> Jupiter. Climb billboard. Yeah. So, so you you now have now you have to hire a crier uh, who will uh, who will run run around and um, and and get people to come and complain to you, which which ought to be a pretty fun job. And and to do that, we have Mary report the vice. Oh. Uh, who is who is about to enter? Uh, go for it, Mary. Report. Brother, hold up your torch a little higher. Now I beseech you, my lord, look on me first. I trust your lordship shall not find me the worst. What, what art thou that approaches so nigh? Forsooth and please your lordship, it is I. But all that we know very well. But what I? What I? Some say I am. I per se I. But. What manner at I so ever be I, I assure your good lordship, I am I. In what manner man art thou? Show quickly. I got a poor gentleman dwelleth hereby. A gentleman? Thyself bringeth witness nay, both in thy light behaviour and array. What art thou called where thou dost resort? Forsooth, my lord, Master Mary, report. Thou art no meat man in our business, for thine appearance is too much likeness cannot your lordship like my manner mine apparel nor my name neither to another of all we have devotion a proper likelihood of promotion well then as wise as you seem to be yet can you see no wisdom in me but since ye dispraise me for so light an elf i pray you give me leave to praise myself and for the first part i will begin in my behavior at my coming in Wherein I think I have little offended, for sure my courtesy could not be amended. And, as for my suit to your servant to be, my deal have been missed for your honesty. For, as I be saved, if I sh shall not lie, I saw no man sue for the office but I. Wherefore, if ye take me not, or I go, ye must anon, whether ye or no. And, since your intent is but for the weathers, what skills are apparel to be freeze or feathers? I think it wisdom since no man forbade it, with this to spare a better if I had it. And for my name, which reporting always truly, what hurt to report a matter, a sad matter merrily? As I by occasion for the same intent to a certain widow this day I was sent, whose husband departed without her witting, a special good lover, and she has his, his own sweeting, to whom at my coming I cast such a figure, me, figure, meaning the matter according to my nature, that when we departed above uh, all other things, she thanked me heartily for my merry tidings. And if I had not handled it merrily, perchance she might have taken it heavily. But in such fashion I conjured and bound her, that I left her merrier than I found her. What man may compare to show the like comfort that daily is shown by me, Mary's report? and for your purpose at this time meant for all the weathers i am so indifferent without infection standing so upright sunlight moonlight starlight twilight torchlight cold heat moist dry hail rain frost snow lightning thunder cloudy misty windy fair foul above head and under temperate or distemperate whatever it be i promise your lordship all is one to me well, son, considering thine indifferency and partly the rest of thy declaration, we make thee our servant. And immediately will thou depart and cause proclamation, publishing our pleasure to every nation, which one thinks, which thing once done with all diligence, make thy return again to this present, here to receive all suitors of each degree, and such as to thee might seem most meekly. We will thou bring them before our majesty, and for the rest that be not so worthy, make thy report to us effectually, so that we may hear each manner suit at large. Thus, see thou depart, and look upon thy charge. Now, my good Lord God, our lady be with thee. Friends, a fellowship, let me go by ye. Think ye I stand thrusting among you here? Nay, by God, I must thrust about other gear. Mary report goeth out. At the end of this stave, the god hath a song played in his throne, ere Mary report come in. 
now, since we have thus far set forth our purpose, a while will we withdraw our godly presence, to embold all such more plainly to disclose, as here will attend in our foresaid pretense. And now, according to your obedience, rejoice ye in us with joy most joyfully, and we ourselves shall joy in our own glory. Now, sirs, take heed, for here cometh God's servant. Avant, cowardly caitiffs, avant! Why, ye junken whoresons, will it not be? By your faith, have ye another cap nor knee? Not one of you that will make curtsy to me that I am squire for God's precious body. Regard ye nothing, mine authority? No, welcome home, nor where have ye be? How be it, if ye ax, I could not tell well, but sure I think a thousand mile from hell. And on my faith, I think my, in my conscience, I have been from heaven as far as heaven is hence, at Louvain, at London, at Lombardy, at Baldock, at Barfold, and Barbary, at Cantry, at Coventry, at Colchester, or Wadsworth, or Welbeck, Westchester, Fulham, Failbourne, and Fenlow, at Wallingford, Wakeford, and Wathlingham Stowe, at Taunton, Tiptree, and Tottingham, at Gloucester, Guilford and at Gotham, at Hereford, at Harewich, at Harrow on the Hill, at Sudbury, Southampton, and Shooter's Hill, at Walsingham and Witham and Warwick, at Boston, Bristow, and Berwick, at Graveland, Graveson, and Glastonbury, ooh, young Galen Jaber, the parish of Butsbury, the devil himself, without more leisure, could not have gone half as much as I am sure, but now I have warned them and let them even choose, for in faith I care not who win or lose. Oh my gosh, Lisa, applause. <laughs> um, Sorry for any of those that uh, went off the rails, <laughs> any of those names. Most of them I've recognized before, but <laughs> that, that's probably I, not a real board. Oh, well. <laughs> I, I think Jinjang Jaybird, the parish of Buttsbury is, ah, is probably okay. my... my I, that's I, a tough one. <laughs> I think that one may have been made up. Um, all, all the all, all the others are real places. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, I reckon you know some Gloucester and you know Walsingham. So, um, from from this, Lisa, do you get a sense of who Mary Report is? It's <laughs> just running around everywhere. I love the job interview. No, man. I'm the best person for this. You don't even understand. Like, it doesn't matter that he's talking to like the the king of the gods. He's like, no, man, I got you. This is I'm the best for this job. But he's just literally been everywhere, all over, all over. So he knows just the weather and who to get and who to drag in. And so it's it's I picture either like if you were doing more of a traditional of uh, you know someone with just like lots of uh, weather type things on in a cloak with like you know, clouds or sun or something, or a super modern one where it's like a weather person in a very natty suit, like going, and then some sun or rain or, you know, <laughs> with that, with the background of the weather report. So either of those. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, um, do, what what sense do, does anyone else get of Mary reports? Stephen, what do you think of, what do you, what do you think of your, your new employee here? I think, I think the performance possibilities of those lists is wonderful you know that the, 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 there was a list of weather as well wasn't there and you can do you can do so much with that you know and uh, and it the the you know the whole sort of control it gives you over over the pacing you know you can just kind of show off you can get faster you can get slow you can give it something physically you know it's it's a real kind of um uh there's so many possibilities there, I think. So yeah. the idea is that I guess that Jupiter should be fairly, fairly staid and fairly majestic. And then Mary report is just sort of bouncing right off the walls, right. you know. Good yeah. character for audience participation as well, because he could be running around and be like, it's sunny and right, you know, and just. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I, I noticed um, that when Jupiter talks about hiring someone and, and looks into the audience, mm -hmm. um, then <laughs> the implication is that Mary Report is in the audience and yeah. stands up. Uh, that would be awesome if Mary Report like started the show in the audience and then just suddenly like, oh, I can do it. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and Sojourner, how does uh, it's it's your first session, so I'm throwing you yes, in. Yes, <laughs> what, what does what does this scene feel like to you? Like, how would you stage it if you had to stage it? Um, how would I stage it? Well, I definitely, 
Uh, Mary Port is definitely the jester, and I'd assume they'd be in like loads of colourful things. And um, Jupiter would be like in something dark and contrasting, mm-hmm. and maybe Jupiter Jupiter would be like above on what, what would you say the I can't remember what it's called <laughs> like, like, like a um, dais yeah like maybe on a dais or something and Mary Report would be down here like trying to do things and getting things wrong and um, yeah and 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 maybe if, if he does start in the audience maybe it is like really just rugged clothes clothing and things that um might be a part of like that traditional audience like looking a bit of a mess um but here here to be happy and please people (laughs) but as well as like get some jibes in as well he seems a bit tongue-in-cheek you're you're right he does he does abuse the audience quite a bit i i like your idea of him first wearing something unremarkable and then maybe we can have a reveal (laughs) (laughs) or when he comes back in maybe he's wearing something else maybe he's wearing a uniform that jupiter gave him with more weather symbols uh like you see on tv or something that he's maybe lightning bolt (laughs) but he's like added little decorations for himself just to like show his personality off yeah because mary report being the vice the vice in this uh in in the cast list, he's called Mary Report the Vice, and the Vice in plays of this era and earlier is um, it's where you put your best verbal comedian. Um, mm-hmm. The Vice is often a minor devil, which you know gives an additional layer of irony to the Vice being God's servant uh, in in that last speech, uh, and usually the Vice interacts with the audience more than the other characters do. Uh, right. So that whole last speech uh, of of Mary reports was um, v- very much uh, saying, you know, jostling the audience and saying, why don't they give him more respect? And uh, and you can imagine the audience giving giving that back and maybe heckling a bit. And and uh, yes, having uh, the, e- Eric, do you have any thoughts before we move on? I just like the fact that uh, before, when um, Mary Report is going off stage, he goes, Now, good my lord, God, Our Lady be with you, as if, like, you know, um, he really needs the blessing, you know, and also kind of this, you know, Jupiter doesn't really fit into the Christian pantheon. Right. Um, <laughs> but it's just like, Yeah, see ya. Bye. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. So, um, yeah, you're right. The the vice is God's servant, but it's certainly not the Christian God. Uh, the, although, you know, Jupiter's doing his best. Um, definitely doing his best. So, uh, here a gentleman comes in, uh, but before he comes in, he blows his horn. I'm going to have to make the awful noise again. Uh, so, ah. that, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, he, Mary, report here is your horn. <laughs> Now, by my troth, this was a goodly hearing. I went it had been the gentlewoman's blowing, but it is not so, as now I suppose, for women's horns sound more in a man's nose. Stand ye merry, my friends, everyone. Say that to me and let the rest alone. Sir, ye be welcome and all your men. Now, Many. in good sooth, my friend, God a mercy. And since that I meet thee here thus by chance, I shall require thee a further acquaintance, and briefly to show thee this is the matter. I come to sue to the great god Jupiter for help of things concerning my recreation according to his late proclamation. Mary, and I am he that this must speed, but first tell me what be ye indeed. Forsooth, good friend, I am a gentleman. A goodly occupation by St. Anne. On my faith, you may have health, hath a merry life, but who maketh all these horns, yourself or your wife? Nay, even in earnest, I ask you this question. Now, by my troth, thou art a merry one. In faith of us both, I think never one sad, for I am not so merry, but ye seem as mad. But stand ye still and take a little pain. I will come to you by and by again. Now, gracious God, if your will so be, I pray you, let me speak a word with you. And Jupiter. Sorry. Um, no, there, there was no re-entrance marked, so you're... Yeah, I, I zoned out, sorry. Uh, my son, say on, let us hear thy mind. 
My lord, there standeth a suitor even here behind, a gentleman in yonder corner, and, as I think, his name is Master Horner. A hunter he is, and cometh to make you sport. He would hunt a, so or a sow or twain out of this sort. Whatsoever his mind be, let him appear. Now, good Master Horner, I pray you come near. I am no Horner, knave. I will, thou know it. I thought ye had been, for when ye did blow it, heard I never horse some make horn so go. As leave ye kiss mine arms, as blow with my whole so. Come your way before the god Jupiter, and there for yourself ye shall be suitor. Most mighty prince and god of every nation, please see for your highness to vouchsafe the hearing of me, which, according to your proclamation, doth make appearance in way of beseeching not sole for myself, but generally, for all come of noble and ancient stock, which sought above all doth most thankfully daily take pain for wealth of the common flock, with diligent study always devising to keep them in order and unity, in peace to labour the increase of their living, whereby each man may prosper in plenty. Wherefore, good God, this is our whole desiring, that for ease of our pains, at times vacant, in our recreation, which chiefly is hunting, it may please you to send us weather pleasant, dry and not misty, the wind calm and still, that after our hounds journeying so merrily, chasing the deer over dale and hill, in hearing we may follow and to comfort the cry. Right well we do perceive your whole request, which shall not fail to rest in memory, wherefore we will ye set yourself at rest, till we have heard each man indifferently, and we shall take such order universally as best may stand to our honour infinite, for wealth in common and each man's singular profit. In heaven and earth honoured by be the name of Jupiter, who of his godly goodness hath set this matter in so goodly frame, that every white shall have his desire, doubtless. And first, for us nobles and gentlemen, I doubt not in his wisdom to provide such weather as in our hunting, now and then we may both tice and receive on every side, which thing, once had for our said re recreation, so greatly prevail you in preferring our health, and for what thing more needful than our preservation, being the wheel and heads of all commonwealth. Now I perceive, your mateship, whose head be you? Whose head am I? Thy head. What sayest thou now? Nay, I think it very true, so God me help. For ever have I been of a little whelp, so full of fancies and so many fits, so many small reasons and in so many wits, that even as I stand, I pray God be dead, if ever I thought them all meet for one head. But since I have one head more than I knew, blame not my rejoicing, I love all things new. And sure it is a treasure of heads to have store, one feat can I now that I never could before. What is that? By God, since ye came hither, I can set my head and my tail together. This head shall save money by St. Mary, for henceforth I will no apothecary. For all times when such things shall mister, my new head shall give mine an old tail a glister. And after all this, then shall my head wait upon my tail, and there stand at receipt. Sir, for all the rest, I will not now move you, but if we live, I shall smell how, ye shall smell how I love you. And, sir, touching your suit here, depart when it please you, for be ye sure, as can, I will ease you. Then give me thy hand, that promise I take, and if, for my sake, any suit thou do make, I promise thy pain to be required, requ requited, more largely than now shall be recited. Alas, God's neck, God's pity, where's my head? By Saint Eve, I fear me, I shall be dead. And it were me think I were no wonder, since my head and by my body so far asunder. Ah, ni nicely done, you two. Um, and uh, you three, I should say. Uh, it, it's, it's odd. Uh, Jupiter, Jupiter went away and announced he was going away, and then he wasn't given a stage direction to come back, so you don't know when he appeared. Uh, and and uh, I, I think we can, we can make that Haywood's fault. <laughs> it's me, oh. I zoned out. I know, I'm sorry. It's, it's okay, when you're the god of everything, you have a lot on your mind. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so the, gentle, the gentleman wants, uh, wants calm weather, um, 
He he wants. Uh, what kind of weather does the gentleman want? Again, I've I've forgotten. He wants weather where people can work in, like all the I guess all the peasants can work and 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 do things for him. But wants really calm and nice weather when it's hunting, like so he can go out and have a jolly time on the hunt. It's it's true. It's true. There's nothing uh, nothing more boring than when you try and and you're you're on your horse and you're chasing some hapless creature and. And the weather is lousy. Oh my god! <laughs> so, uh, so, so yeah, that's a that's a pretty good pretty good request. Uh, and so, Jenner, what what sense do you get of of who the gentleman is as a character? Well, I guess because it's called the gentleman, he's supposed to, he's gonna he's supposed to be like this this gentleman figurehead, um, I, I suppose. But he's also um, there, there's something else there which I haven't got quite my thing my finger on yet. There's, because he he is having a little bit of a laugh with the um, with Mary report in in some moments, so yeah, there's a little bit of that there as well. It's it's true, and that little scene where um, where Mary report says, "Whose head art thou? Uh, whose head be you?" And the gentleman says, "Whose head am I? Thy head." And in in some ways, you know, generally that means. I'm I'm your social superior. I'm I'm your your master, as it were. And, and Mary reports diction really is that of a a, a very witty servant. Um, but then but then Mary report takes the head thing literally, and I kind of love that joke. I Lisa, what, what do you, what do you think of it? Yeah, at first I was even you know going through it. Um, then I realized he was doing a bit. I had to go back to what the gentleman first said. It's like, oh, he means. He's a head in society, and then because you get down to, alas, my neck, wait, where's my head? You know, then he's still doing the thing, even though the gentleman is gone. But now he's performing for Jupiter, I guess. So, Yeah, and, and there's a little indication that there's maybe some physical comedy there. It's like, yeah. wow, well, uh, since I have more than one head, I can set my head and my tail together. Yeah. So he's like, presumably trying to get his butt in the gentleman's face somehow. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of room for some bunch of lotsies, a lot of audience stuff. Like you could just go to town with that whole idea. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And um, and does anyone else have more thoughts before we move on? Eric, your thoughts. Give uh, them to for me. For some reason, the rhyme is reminding me of like like a spoonful of sugar or like um like from Mary Poppins like it's that tidy and sort of like uh, but like specifically the song where she, you know it's like um where Mary Poppins talks about how um you know it only takes a very little to sort of tidy up and all that stuff mm -hmm. because it's all rhyme and it's all very sort of like oh such a funny rhyme ha -ha, kind yeah. of the the rhyme is nice and playful here and i thought you two brought that out really really beautifully um, it's very different from the verse that's written for Jupiter, which is much more stately. Um, yeah. And the gentleman, the gentleman is a bit more stately than Mary Report, but not quite as much so as Jupiter. <laughs> um, basically, everyone's more stately than Mary Report. Uh, but now uh, we have a merchant who's about to enter. Uh, he's he's going to be a little bit uh, a, a little bit. Uh, lower of social status than the gentleman, but we shall see what kind of weather, weather that merchant wants. Um, and uh, Mary report, if you can take it from Master Parson. Master Parson, now welcome by my life, I pray you, how doth my mistress, your wife? Sir, for the priesthood and wife that you allege, I see you speak more, speak more of dotage than knowledge. But let pass, sir, I would to you be suitor to bring me if you can before Jupiter. Yes, Mary can I, and will do it indeed. Terry, I shall make way for your speed. In faith, good Lord, if it please your gracious godship, I must have a word or twain with your lordship. Sir, yonder is another man in place who maketh great suit to speak with your grace. Your pleasure once known, he cometh by and by. Bring him before our presence, son, hardly. What? Where be you? Shall I not find ye? Come away, I pray God, the devil blind ye. And I forgot to unmute. Most mighty prince and lord of lords all, right humbly beseecheth your majesty, your merchantmen through the world all, that it may please you of your benignity, in the daily danger of, good, of our goods in life, first to consider the desert of our request, 
what wealth we bring the rest to our great care and strife, and then to reward us as ye shall think best. What were the surplusage of each commodity which groweth and increaseth in every land, except exchanged by such men as we be, by way of intercourse that lieth on our hand, we fraught from home, things whereof there is plenty, and home we bring of such, such things as there be scant. Who should for us merchants account, accounted be? For were we not, were not we, the world should wish and want in many things, which now lack like rehearsal. And briefly to conclude, we beseech your highness that of the benefit proclaimed in general, we may be partakers for common increase, stabilizing, establishing weather thus, pleasing your grace, stormy, not misty, the wind measurable. Thus safely we may pass from place to place, bearing our sails for speed most valuable, and also the wind to change and to turn east, west, north, and south, as may as best may be set in any one place, not too long to sojourn for the length of our voyage that we may lose our market. Right, well have you said, and we accept it so, and so shall we reward you ere we go hence. But ye must take patience till we have heard mo, that we may indifferently give sentence, and there may pass by us no spot of negligence, but justly to judge each thing, so upright that each man's part may shine in the self-right. Now, sir, by your faith, if ye should be sworn, heard ever ye God speak so since ye were born? So wisely, so gently his words be showed. I thank his grace. My suit is well bestowed. Sir, what voyage attend ye next to go? I trust her Midland to be to see you. Aha, is it your mind to sail at sea? Nay then, there we will, by your lady ye may go, and let alone with this, be of good cheer, and ye may trust me at sea as well be as see, as well as here. For though ye were throw me a thousand mile a pace, I would do as much as ye were here in place. For since that from hence it is to go so far thither, I care not though ye never come again hither. Sir, if you remember me when time shall come, though I require not all, I shall deserve some. Now fare thee well, and God thank you by St. Anne. I pray you, mark the fashion of this honest man. He putteth me in more trust at this meeting here than he shall find a cause why this twenty years. Nice. Um, I, I wonder if he gave you maybe a little coin as he went out yeah. or something. Why was he something so friendly at this guy? Right. <laughs> like mm, capitalism <laughs> now um now eric we have um we have heard uh, in other plays that we've done with this group we've heard a lot of opinions about merchants that have maybe been not so positive uh but but this guy gives a, a very good report of himself yeah but yeah well, it's kind of like that thing that we did with um, the knight, the merchant, and uh, the plowman, isn't it? Where um, <laughs> basically the knight thought he was better than the merchant, and the merchant was like, no, but we provide everything. And then the, you know, the plowman was like, yeah, but we make everything. So, yeah, um, it's, it's kind of that. It, there was an element of that, I think, but it was not competitive because he's just like, well, you know, we just need, uh, you know, if, if, if you please, if, if, if it pleases you, we, we would like this kind of weather um, because, you know, we kind of bring all these things, and, you know, we kind of, for, it's for the common good. That's, that's the thing he's saying, you know, we, uh, we're, we're the people who, in, who increase prosperity, who bring you the nice goods, uh, and to do that we need, uh, we, we need, um, wind but not storms we we need wind for our sails but but not storms to sink our boats uh, and we and we also need that wind to come from the right direction for for the direction that we're sailing yeah um, which seems a, a pretty reasonable request although micromanaging the wind might uh might be a bit boring for for jupiter here um oh and by the way the play eric is talking about is um gentleness and nobility which may be found upon our youtube channel um so uh so yeah any any other other thoughts on that bit that was hard to read it didn't rhyme like well like it was longer lines um than 
the other parts, at least for me, I don't know. Uh, yeah, they didn't seem to quip as mu quite as much as the gentlewoman, gentle and men and uh, Mary report did. They like had a, more fits and starts. Kind of yeah, thing. there was a lot of groveling too. It's like, please, your grace, we you you who are right. all knowing, all benevolent, blah blah blah. Yeah. There was a lot of that. It's like, yeah, okay, to, you you can wipe yeah. the right. slobber from the boots now. <laughs> It's true, and you're, it does feel a little bit heavier and a little bit not as quick as, as some of the previous, as say the gentleman's rhymes, mm -hmm. uh, or some of the previous rhymes. And the rhyme scheme has gone from couplets to A, B, A, B, which mm -hmm. I think makes you have to slow down a little bit. Uh, but am, am I hallucinating that? Yeah, we're, we're in couplets before, aren't we? Um, even the uh the no i'm wrong the gentleman went uh, to abab for his speech but then okay. but then the the little back and forth with mary report was in couplets yeah. and i guess what we're learning here is that couplets move faster and abab is a little bit more measured mm -hmm. uh and you know a little bit more formal and uh uh mary and the merchant also doesn't have as comic a scene with Mary Report afterwards, uh, does he? he um, Mary Report do, does their best to, to play to play with him. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the play is. I mean, it's it's two things at once, isn't it? It's it's a very philosophical play, in the sense that there is no thing, such thing as good weather. It all depends on who you're asking. You know that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's it's quite learned in that respect. But at the same time, you have this kind of fantasia about. Uh, well, if I had two heads, but the, my other head was your head, I would definitely use it to keep my ass clean. <laughs> and so you, you've got this sort of incredible sort of mixture. Um, and I think, you know, maybe maybe here what we've got is we've just got the sort of slightly more, uh, I don't know, philosophical part of, of the project coming to the fore. You know, even, although Mary Report is still saying, you know, I don't, don't care if I never see you again, bugger off, you know. <laughs> Um, so I, it looked, I don't know, it, it's shaping up for there to be this kind of really interesting back and forth. You know, you couldn't just have Merry Report just being like that all the way through. It would just wear everybody out, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you know, you, can, you can't always be, you know, raging on the heat, as it were, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it'd be interesting to see where it goes from here, though. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, Merry Report strikes me as very much... Uh, what we would say now is an insult comedian. Um, ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, you know, abuse is, is Mary Report's language of love, it seems. Um, and, and, and it depends whether the insults are affectionate or, or, or not so much. Uh, but it's, all, it's also very, very alert and very in the moment. It's classic sort of improv, isn't it? It'll take something somebody else has said and just start riffing on it. Which is, which is again a lovely contrast to you know the sort of quite stately prepared speeches almost that these people are giving, you know that you you will um, uh, like he he does a little bit of a riff on on uh, the name of the island doesn't he, you know so what you've got is sort of real liveness live feel to it, mm -hmm. even though you know and without that it would just you know it would be really stodgy wouldn't it, you know it would be really kind of TED talk. It would be yeah. Star Wars without Han Solo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's a, a really good point that, um, you know, Hay Haywood, we see from his other plays that he loves plays where people debate things. He loves plays where people have arguments. That's, uh, that, that's his fave. So, um, uh, and and the, and this takes the form rather than of characters arguing among themselves. It's everyone petitioning Jupiter for something different, and mm -hmm. Jupiter having to judge the merits. Uh, so, we will see. Uh, indeed, a couple more petitions uh, are coming, and and indeed, uh, here entereth uh, the ranger. Mary, report if you can uh, if you could give us your last speech again, mm -hmm. uh, just to um, just to give the ranger a bit of a run up. Yeah. Now fare you well, and God thank you by St. Anne. I pray you mark the fashion of this honest man. He putteth me in more trust and at this meeting here that he shall find cause why this twenty years. 
God be here. Now, Christ, keep the company. In faith, ye be welcome, even very scantly. Sir, for your coming, what is the matter? I would fain speak with the god Jupiter. That will not be, but ye may do this. Tell me your mind. I am an officer of his. Be so. Marry, I cry your mercy. Your mastership may say I am homely, but since your mind is to have reported the cause wherefore I am now resorted, please see if your mastership it is so. I come for myself and such of the mo, rangers and keepers of certain places as for forests, parks, Puleus and chases, where we be charged with all manner gain. Small is our profit and great is our blame. Alas, for our wages, what we, the near, what is forty shillings or five mark a year? Many times and oft, where we be fitting, we spend forty pence apiece at a sitting. Now, for our vantage, which chiefly is windfall, that is right naught, there bloweth no wind at all, which is the thing wherein we find most grief and cause for my coming to sue for relief that the god of pity all this thing knowing may send us good range of blustering and blowing and if i cannot get god to do so good i would hire the devil to run through the wood the roots to the turnip the tops to the bring under a mischief upon them and a wild thunder very well said i said by your charity as much in a manner as by your honesty I shall set you somewhat in ease anon. You shall put on your cap when I am gone. For, I see, ye not care who win or lose, so ye may find means to win your fee. Sir, as is that, ye speak as if please ye, but let me speak with the god, if it may be, I pray you, let me pass ye. Why nay, sir, by the mass ye. Then will I leave you even as I found ye. Go when ye will, no man here hath bound ye. So... That's a that's a really interesting scene. He doesn't even get to see Jupiter. Right, he doesn't even get in. Told right. to go away, <laughs> basically. And he's like, fine, I'm gonna hire the devil then. Right. He's... <laughs> yeah, let, let the devil bring all the thunder. <laughs> right, right. Never mind then. <laughs> so, is it going to costume change or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jupiter might be doubling one of these other guys. <laughs> oh. I was going to say, so basically Mary is the bouncer at this point. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the name's not on the list. Right, and the ranger is not on my list, right. So we're going sort of downward in social status, aren't we? We've started with Jupiter, who's a god, sort of a kingly figure. Mm -hmm. Then we had a gentleman. Then we had a merchant. And now we have a ranger who basically is uh, a forester. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he's, he says rangers and keepers, so I'm guessing he's sort of like a gamekeeper. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. and, um, and they don't pay him very much. And, uh, and, and, but he does get to collect windfalls, which are fruit and nuts and things that have blown off trees and also dead wood that falls he can use it uh, for firewood or sell these things there if it falls off a tree it's his got it uh, right so so basically he wants some wind uh, <laughs> so so Jerner, uh, am i am i summing this up right am i missing anything um yeah i think you're summing it up right also he's in he's in couplets as well so mm. um mm -hmm. instead of a b a b so I guess as it's gone down, it's going down order. It's going down. <laughs> yeah. Is Mary sort of still at the bottom, but then he's sort of elevated because he has this new Jupiter job? Like in, in status, that, like if he didn't work for Jupiter, would he still be even lower? That's than what him? I'm getting from it. Yeah. Okay. And whatever water miller is. <laughs> I well, guess water mill. Um yeah. you you know the kind of mill that has a water wheel, uh okay. rather and then later we'll also have a windmiller who has a, a windmill. Um, okay. Yeah. And in both of these devices, the wind sails and the water wheel serve to turn the millstone, which grinds uh, grinds grain. Flour and yeah, okay, to make your to make your flour. Yes. Yeah, but but we will we will see about the water miller. We will we will very soon see in the next scene because uh, here entereth the water miller and the ranger goeth out. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> What the devil should skill, though all the world were dumb, since all are speaking, we never be heard. 
we cry out for rain, the devil's speed drop will come. We watermillers be nothing in regard. No water have we to grind at any stint. The wind is so strong, the rain cannot fall, which keepeth our mill dams as dry as a flint. We are undone. We grind nothing at all. The greater is the pity, as thinketh me, for what availeth to each man his corn till it be ground by such men as we be? There is the loss. If we be forborn, for touching ourselves, we are but drudges, and very beggars save only our toil, which is right small, and yet many grudges, for grist of a bushel to give a quart bowl, yet we're not reparations, we might do well. Our millstones, our wheel with our cogs and our trindle, our floodgate, our mill pool, our water wheel, our hopper, our extra, our iron spindle, in this and much more, so great is our charge, that we would not wreck it, though no water were save it only it toucheth each man so large, and each for our neighbour Christ biddeth us care. Wherefore my conscience hath pricked me hither, in this to sue, according to the cry, for plenty of rain to the god Jupiter, to whose presence I will go even boldly. Sir, I doubt nothing your audacity, but I fear me ye lack capacity. For if you were wise, you might well espy how rudely ye err from rules of courtesy. What, ye come in reveling and reheating, even as a knave might go a bear baiting? Oh, you bear record what favour I have. How oh, familiarly calleth me knave? Doubtless the gentleman is universal. But mark this lesson, sir. You should never call your fellow knave, nor your brother whoresome. For nought can ye get by it when ye have done. Thou art neither brother nor fellow to me, for I am God's servant. Mayest thou not see? Would ye presume to speak with the great God? Nay, discretion, and you be far too odd. By your lady, these knaves must be tied shorter. Sir, who let you in? Spank ye with the porter? Nay, by my troth, nor with no another man. I saw you well when I first began. Albeit, so help me God and holy damn, I took you for a knave, as I am. But marry now, since I know what ye be. I must and will obey your authority, and if I may not speak with Jupiter, I beseech you be my solicitor. As in that, I will be your well-willer. I perceive you to be a water-miller, and your whole desire, as I take the matter, is plenty of rain for an increase of water. The let whereof, let affirm determinately, is only the wind your mortal enemy. Truth it is. For it bloweth so aloft, we never have rain, or at the most, not oft. Wherefore, I pray you, put the god in mind, clearly for ever, to banish the wind. Here entereth the windmiller. How is all the weather gone, or I come? For the passion of God help me to some. I am a windmiller, as many more be. No wretch in wretchedness, so wretched as we. The whole sort of my craft be all marred at once. The wind is so weak it stirreth not our stones, nor scantly can shatter the shiften, shiften, sh eh, the shitten sail that hangeth shattering at a woman's tail. The rain never resteth so long the sh be the showers, from time of beginning till four and twenty hours, and end when it shall at night or at noon, another beginneth as soon as that is done. Such revel of rain you know well enough, destroyeth the wind, but be it never so rough, whereby our mill, since our mills become to still standing, now may we windmillers even go even to hanging. A miller with a murrain and a mischief. Who would be a miller? As good be a thief. Yet in time past, when grinding was plenty, who were we so like God's fellows as we? As fast as God made corn, we millers made meal. <laughs> but which might best be forlorn for common weal. But let thy gear pass, for I fear our pride is the cause of the care which God doth us provide. Wherefore I submit me, intending to see what comfort may come by humility. And now at this time they said in the cry, the God has come down to remedy, to shape remedy. No doubt he is here, even in yonder throne, but in your matter he trusteth me, he trusteth me alone. Wherein I do perceive by your complaint, oppression of rain doth make the wind so faint that ye windmillers be clean cast away. If Jupiter help not, it is as ye say. But in few words to tell you my mind round upon this condition would be bound. Day by day to say our lady's psalter, 
in this world where no where no drop of water nor never rain but wind continual then we should we windmillers be lords over all come on and say how twain can agree a brother of yours as miller as ye be i mean of our craft we may be brothers but whilst we live we shall never be lovers we be of one craft but not of one kind i live by water and he by the wind and sir as ye desire wind continual so would i have rain evermore to fall which to inexperience right well ye see right so or never together can be for as so long as the wind ruleth it is plain twenty to one you get no drop of rain and when the element is too far oppressed down cometh the rain and setteth the wind at rest for this ye see we cannot both obtain for ye must lack wind or i must lack rain Therefore, I think good before this audience, each for ourselves to say, or we go hence, and whom is thought weakest when we have finished, leave off his suit and content to be banished. In faith agreed, but then by your license, our most for a time shall hang in suspense, since water and wind is chiefly our suit, which best may be spared we will first disp dispute. Wherefore to the sea my reason shall resort, where ships by means of wind drive from port to port from land to land in distance many a mile great is the passage and small is the while so great is the profit as to me doth seem that no man's wisdom the wealth can esteem and since the wind is conveyor of all who but the wind should have thanks above all admit in this place a tree here to grow and thereat the wind in great rage to blow when it hath all blown, this is a clear case, the tree removeth no hair breadth from its place. No war would the ships blow the best it could, although it would blow down both mast and shroud, except the fleet the ship fleet upon the water, the wind can right naught do, plain matter. Yet may ye on water, without any wind, row forth your vessel where men will have their sin. Nothing more rejoices the mariner than mean cools of wind and plenty of water but commonly the cause of every rack is excess of wind where water doth lack the rage of these storms the peril is such that better were no wind than so far too much well if any reason if my reason in this may cannot stand i will forsake the sea and leave to land in every church where god's service is the organs bear brunt of half the gear twitches where which causeth the sound water or wind moreover for wind this thing i find for the most part all manner minstrels minstrel eh, minstrels minstrelsy yeah minstrel yeah i can almost say it minstrelsy <laughs> by wind they deliver their sound chiefly fill me a bagpipe of your water full as sweetly shall it sound as we when stuffed as it we stuffed with wool on my faith i think the moon be at the full the frantic fancies be then most plentiful which are at the pride of their spring in your head so far from our matter he now is fled as for the wind in any instrument it is no parcel of our argument we spake of wind that cometh naturally and that is wind forced artificially which is not a purpose but if it were and water indeed right nor could do there yet i think organs no such commodity whereby water should banish be and as for your bagpipes i take them as knifles your matter is matter is all in fancies and trifles by god but ye shall not trifle me off so if these if these things serve not i will rehearse more and now to mind there is one old proverb come when bushel of march dust is worth a king's ransom what is a hundred thousand bushels worth then not one might for the thing's self to no man why shall wind everywhere be uh, thus uh, thus be object nay in the highways he shall take effect whereas the wind whereas the rain doth never good but hurt for wind maketh but dust and water maketh dirt powder or syrup sir is which like ye best who liketh not the tone may lick up the rest but sure whoever whosoever hath essayed such sips had levered dusty eyes and dirty lips and it is said 
since afore we were born, the drought doth never make dearth of corn. And well it is known to the most fool here that uh, how rain hath priced corn within this seven year. Sir, I pray thee, spare me a little season, and I shall briefly conclude thee with reason. What case? One summer's day without wind to be. A rageous wind in winter days two or three. Much more shall dry that one calm day in summer than shall these three windy days in winter. Whom shall we thank for this when all is done? Thank to wind? Nay, thank chiefly the sun. And so, for drought, if corn thereby increase, the sun doth comfort and ripe all doubtless. And off the wind, so layeth the corn, God what? that never after it can ripe, but rot. If drought took place, as ye say, yet may ye see, little helpeth the wind in this commodity. And now, sir, I deny your principle. If drought ever were, it were impossible to have any grain. For ere it can grow, ye must plough your land, harrow, and sow, which will not be, except ye may have rain to temper the ground. And after again, for, for springing and plumping all manner corn, yet must ye have water, or all is forlorn. If ye take water for no commodity, yet must ye take it for thing of necessity, for washing, for scouring, for all filth cleansing. Well, water lacketh what beastly being, in brewing, in baking, in dressing of meat. If ye lack water, what could ye drink or, or eat? Without water could live neither man nor beast, for water preserveth both most, and least for water could i say a thousand things more saving is now the time will not serve so and as for that wind that you do sue for it's good for your windmill and for no more sir sith all this in experience is tried i say this matter standeth clear on my side well since this will, since this will not serve i will allege the rest sir for our mills i say mine is the best my windmill shall grind more corn in one hour than thy water mill shall in three or four yea more than mine it should in a whole year if thou mightst have as thou wished here for thou desirest to have excess of rain which thing to thing were the worst thou could obtain for if thou didst, it were a plain induction to make mine own desire thine own destruction. For in excess of rain, at any flood, your mills must stand still, they can do no good. And when the wind doth blow the uttermost, our wind mills walk amain in every coast. For as we see the wind in his estate, we moder our sails after the same rate. Since our mills grind so far faster than yours, and also they may grind at all times and hours, I say we need no water mills at all, for windmills be sufficient to serve all. Thou speakest of all, and considerest not half, in boast of thy grist thou art wise as a calf. For though above us your mills grind far faster, what help to those from whom ye be much farther? And of two sorts, if the tone should be conserved, I think it meet the most number should be served. In vales and wheels where most commodity is, there is most people. You must grant thee this. On hills and downs, which part are most barren, there must be few. It can no more sustain. I dare well say, if it were tried even now, that there is ten of us to one of you. And where should chiefly all necessary, necessaries be? But there is people are most in plenty. More reason that you come seven miles a mill, than all the way of the vale should climb the hill. Rain came reasonable, as I require it. We should of your windmills have need no wit. Ah, foolish knaves, for your reasoning is such that ye have reasoned even enough and too much. I have heard all the words that ye both have said, so help me God, the knaves be more than mad. Neither of them both hath wit nor grace to perceive that both mills may serve in place. Between water and wind there is no such let, but each mill may have time to use his fet. Which thing I can tell by experience, for I have, of mine own, not far from hence, and corner together a couple of mills, standing in a mares between two hills. Not of inheritance, but by my wife. She is peeped in the tail for term of her life. The one for wind, the other for water, and of them both I thank God there standeth another. For in a good hour, be it spoken, the water gate no sooner, sooner open. 
but clap, saith the windmill, even straight behind. There is good speed, the devil, and they all grind. But whether that the hopper be dusty, or that the millstones be somewhat rusty, by the mass, the meal is mischievous musty. And if ye think my tale be not trusty, I'll make ye true promise. Come, when ye list, ye shall find me, and ye shall find a taste of the grits. The corn at receipt, aptly, is not good. There can be no sweeter by the sweet rude. Another thing yet which shall not be cloaked. My watermill is many times choked. But so will she be, though you should burst your bones, except ye be perfect in setting your stones. Fear not the lidger, beware your runner. Fear this for the lidger, or ye have won her. Perchance your lidger doth lack good pecking. So saith my wife, and make it all our checking. She would have the mill pecked and pecked, pecked every day. But by God, millers must peck when they may. So off we peck that our stones wax right thin, and all our other gear not worth a pin. For all the pecking and pecking I have so wrought that I have pecked a good pecking iron to naught. How be it if I stick no better tiller? My wife saith she will have a new miller. God let it pass. And now to our matter. I say my mills lack neither wind nor water. No more do yours as far as need doth require. But since you cannot agree, I will desire Jupiter to set you both in such rest as to your wealth and his honor may stand best. Pray you heartily remember me. Let me not be forgotten, I beseech you. I remember you not both alike, and would ye over the ears in the dike. Now we be rid of two knaves at one chance. By St. Thomas, it is a knavish riddance. Nice. Okay, so that is, uh, that's as far as we'll get in that play for tonight. But, uh, and, and perhaps tomorrow we may we may start back a pace. Uh, but um, so now we have a debate within a debate, right? We have um, instead of instead of the petitioner coming to Mary report or to Jupiter, we have them debating each other as to what first of all what kind of weather best suits them, and second of all whether wind or water in general is more necessary to people, and and that's kind of a lovely bit of of Haywood writing. Uh, Eric, how do you feel it? Yeah, it was very like last week when we did witty and witless and all that stuff. It was well, I mean that was more like sort of just two people arguing philosophically, but this is more like I need this to survive. Why why don't you understand me? Um, which made a bit more sense. Yeah, and and Stephen, what are, what are your thoughts? We we've got a renewable energy debate here. It reminds me of two guys talking about cars. You know, <laughs> they're just kind of yeah. But what you don't understand about this car is, you know, it's it's just like that, isn't it? You know, it's a kind of kind of proxy. It's full of details. You know. Um, and it's, it's that it's that kind of thing which you know if you're on the outside of it you're thinking well, why why are you having having this conversation what is the factual thing going on here uh, I suppose from the you know back to the sort of philosophical idea we had gentlemen there's there's only one gentleman but when we take it down to even two people with the same craft want different weather so I suppose that's that's a kind of uh, something new isn't it. You know, otherwise we'd have this kind of fairly tedious progression of people who all want different weather because they do different jobs. You know, which it could get old. It may have got old already. <laughs> no. So this is this is quite a nice dramatic way of, of sticking with it but doing something different, maybe. But it is it is two two blokes getting arsy with each other, isn't it? It's kind of one of them starts rambling on about yeah, well, Bagpipes, <laughs> you know, there was two guys in a bar. Bag, what are you on about bagpipes? I'm not talking about that kind of bagpipes. I hate organs anyway. What's that about? <laughs> you know, it seems to me to take a kind of uh, kind of comic comic turn. Yeah. But whereas, I mean, I guess the the monologues, it was monologue and merry report, wasn't it? So it was a different kind of vibe. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting that the playwright gives Mary Report a little break here. But they, you know, they've been on stage pretty constantly since the end of Jupiter's first speech, and 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 I think they're probably the hardest working actor in this troupe. Um, 
So, but but this this little debate strikes me as as the the little debate between the Millers strikes me as just very very Haywood. Uh, Eric was uh, right in referring to witty and witless on our YouTube channel, uh, where um, the debate was about is it better to be a witty person or a witless person, um, and uh, and in uh, gentleness and nobility where the debate was well uh, which of the social classes should determine the future which was startlingly relevant in parts um and uh and now but but this is a much sort of lighter lighter matter and the hayward seems to know quite a bit about how mills operate like he, he he names the parts of a windmill where, where the, the the miller says, "Oh, I have to repair this part and this part and this part," and and I love how the uh, the water miller starts telling Mary Report how to work his mill, which is really just a very very filthy metaphor. Whew, uh, um, audi audiences at home can try and work that one out for yourselves. <laughs> it it t suddenly turned into like some sort of propaganda for working mills. <laughs> And I don't, I don't know if it continues this way because we've we've had a gentleman and a gentle woman is coming, but it's like here's here's a play about all the trades. Come and join one. <laughs> like it feels like it's doing that. I really wanted uh, Mary Report to, to stay on stage and then run around with cards, Team Water, Team Wind, and then like every <laughs> time someone like got ah, like he, <laughs> just like to keep the stoking stoking the fire, and then run around the other team and be like oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> like drop moments. I I I like that be, because um, for a lot of these debate plays, we've been saying that we need a rap battle type audience who will mm -hmm. react to every sick burn. Um, right, right. And the bagpipe. Right. And the bagpipe. <laughs> yes, you definitely need a Scottish person or two in your audience. Right. right. I know some fans of bagpipe. Like, yeah, we could get a good uh, a good debate going. <laughs> Yeah. So in general, like general thoughts on, on, on the play, the play so far. Uh, I like the more active it is, the, the better and like the funnier it is. The more people just like, again, if you're staging this, running around and like, I think Jupiter would be the only still person. Everybody else, I think would just be like, really want to make their case, you know, it'd be really fun. Yeah, there's not much action as such in this play La last, the lines. Yeah. last night when we did john john uh <laughs> check the youtube channel um when we did when we did john john um there was there was action uh mm -hmm. there was a pie baking there was a bucket with a hole in it um mm -hmm. the uh things happened whereas this is is very much a debate or or an argument and it's uh it's uh, I don't know how 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 would you engage the audience with this? It, it feels like this is going to be taking place in a tavern or like on the village green, and that therefore people from all of these backgrounds would sort of be standing around, and therefore you might end up with with like the millers, like the different sides of the mills going, hey for the water miller and hey for the windmiller, like you you I think. If it was in those settings that like you'd have that, but now it would be really hard. I don't, I'm not sure. Right, it'd be hard. This one would be better yeah. live. And, and I think the, the cast should not leave the stage. It would just be like, they all just jump up whenever and it's like, what? You know, like, and then they just put on a different hat or something, you know. Yeah, it needs to, it, as you said before, it needs to be really active to keep everyone engaged, especially yeah. now, because it's like, what are you talking about? What what about this mill? I didn't know I didn't know any of this about mills before. <laughs> so it's 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 interesting in that in that respect. But I feel like, yeah, definitely when this was being put on, people would have very much sort of understood it as it was being said. Um, in in terms of the trade. Whereas we don't, we still have some mills, but it's very, very few now. It's it's true. You can still actually buy flour that's been uh, milled in a water mill or, or a windmill. E Eric, I saw a hand. I was going to say you could stage this scene as a presidential debate, because that's <laughs> basically what they're doing. It's like, yeah, no, your hair sucks. And you know, like that kind of like, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I know you had enough trauma with that. Like, 
last week. Uh, well, we all had trauma. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm old enough to remember when when presidential debates weren't about people's hair, uh, right. where people well, at least like actual debates. Right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, on the, on the issues. Uh, um, but but yeah, I mean the one that struck me as more like like that about policy was uh, gentleness and and nobility, where they're they're very much talking about social class. But but there is a lot of class discourse here, and it's worth remembering that Haywood was not nobility. He was writing for the court and he worked at the court. Uh, he's first documented as a player of virginals, a keyboard instrument. Uh, but he's but he's not nobility. Uh, he's he's from a sort of middle class background. So who knows? He may have uh, he may have talked with actual millers. Um, Henry uh, Henry VIII certainly gives him uh, some land after the dissolution of the monasteries, which I think is a little after this play is printed. Uh, but um, uh, he's he's popular enough at court, and I'm also not sure what his um, uh, his wife uh, his wife's family. Uh, basically, if you owned land and you grew any grain crop on it, you would talk to a miller because that was the only way you could get it ground. Um, and millers were sort of infamous for. Um, they had a quota of the grain that they could keep uh, and sell as flour. Um, and they were sort of infamous for, for keeping too much and giving you back like really bad flour with stones in it and keeping the good stuff. Uh, and, and then baking also, um, a lot of, many houses didn't have fireplaces and you would take your, your baked goods to a communal oven. So there was a lot more sort of communality and facilities that they had to use much as we go to grocery stores. I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot and I'm straying from from <laughs> from the, the point if point there be. Um, but yeah, St Stephen, what kind of play is this? Well, uh, what just popped into my head it, ages since I'd, I, I saw it, but Harold Pinto, before he started writing plays, he used to write sketches and there's one sketch about plumbing. It's, it's a plumber, and it just goes into massive detail about all the different kinds of plumbing joints there are. Uh, and and the, the idea is, it's just this kind of um, complete divorce between the audience and, and this character. I was wondering if this was back to the Millers again, but I was wondering if this was going on with the Millers, you know, because I, I don't know anything about car cars, and I go to a garage, and it's just assumed I know all about it. And they're talking to me and they're going, you know, uh, uh, so, you know, the, uh, I think what your problem is, is your AB, ABF isn't talking to the, the wheel cam. And I'm going, yeah, yeah, wheel cams. Oh, they're the worst, aren't they? They're terrible. You know, it's cut, it, it sort of feels a bit like that as well. You know, the, the, the more detailed it gets, um, it, the funnier it could be. You know, it's, it's somebody just gets, yeah, no, but you must remember your hopper. Because if your hopper's dusty, well, I don't need to tell you, do I? If your hopper's dusty, then... And then, at the end of all of that, uh, that makes perfect sense of Mary Report going in, going, yeah, and let me tell you about the pecker. Oh, dear. <laughs> I, uh, you know. So it's it's a kind of... Um... Anyway, yes, remembering the pincer thing got me into uh, the point about all the detail, I suppose, which is... It might also work if you hadn't a clue about how these things work. It depends on how you deliver it. You know, if, if this guy, if this guy is sort of completely missing the point with the audience, then that could be the point of speech. Yeah, I, I mean, I think Mary Report knows uh, knows that they're not talking about a real mill, and the Millers are talking about a real mill. <laughs> yeah, well, look, that's, that's that's the deflationary thing. You know, if I, if it'd be like if that pinch of thing I mentioned, if somebody came in and went, yeah, yeah, my pipe, my wife complains about my pipe. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Or something like that. Yeah, I mean, there, there are double entendres enough in the plumbing world. They're like, my ball cock is unbalanced or something. <laughs> um. It's it's big. It's it's sort of. I love the way that tonally, you just never know what it's going to do next. You know. You, you can be kind of, oh, yes, this is quite interesting, actually. And, well, this isn't quite as interesting as it was. It's, oh, here's Mary Report, way You know, it's kind of like that. 
I, I, I like that kind of way. It, it seems to it pulls it off for me. Mary Report does seem to keep the whole thing thing ticking over. Do, do, do they, for those whose first experience of the play this is, does that work for you? Yeah, I think without Mary Report, it would be a bit of a slog. Yeah. And I think Mary Report is that person who keeps everything at beat and keeps it going and makes sure the audience stays on track. Yeah. It's definitely the backbone to the play. I agree. I think Mary Report holds it together. Yeah. And and some of those speeches are kind of actually lovely. You, it wouldn't necessarily be amiss doing doing some of that in an audition if you were auditioning for a comedy. Right. So this is probably the time of the evening when we go to final thoughts, uh, Jerry Springer style. Except no one's no one's thrown a chair yet, and if they did, they'd have to throw it pretty far. Um, like across the entire Atlantic, which, you know, we could try. It's good to have an ambition. Uh, but uh, Eric, what are your final thoughts? I th this play is fun, and I think a lot could be done. With I mean, obviously, we won't finish it, but I mean, even for a play that is about weather, um, I think a lot could be done with it. Um, and you could sort of picture them sort of just fighting over flour or something. Or, I don't know, just like mud wrestling or whatever you want to do, you know? It, like, there's so many possibilities. And um, I, I like how Jupiter is like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go, you know, I have like this thing. Or um, <laughs> you, you handle it, uh, servant. And then Mary Report sort of takes over. Yeah. In this very strange way. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it, I, I think it, it, it's a fun play. I mean, as, you know, most, most of the comedies that we've seen now are. Yeah, I think if someone doesn't get a bag of flour thrown over them at some point, like, we've missed a trick. Um, Lisa, what are, what are your final thoughts? I thought it was very fun. There is boundless opportunity and not just Mary Report, even though that person has to like set the action, like for everybody else to kind of get, if you're not playing your gentleman or, or whatever, for everyone else to sort of get in on the action and to find and just like keep it churning. So it's not, it's not just people just talking about the weather, you know, but it could actually be kind of fun yeah like enjoy this one interesting to see how that how it comes out <laughs> yeah 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 it's like what decision can jupiter make because they can't please everyone right there's no weather that's gonna like please them all right it's it's true and and sojourner what are your final thoughts so i feel like it's quite in, it, it, even though they're talking about the weather in this it you know this cosmic thing the weather this natural thing it feels very intimate um and that people are riffing off each other and looking at the audience and talking to them and wanting wanting their feedback and it it almost feels like the sort of play that's put on when all your actors are ill or if there's like there's something going on and they or they're in all the other actors are in rehearsal so they have to show something because it, it feels like this could be done with maybe three people and like you, you'd be able to put it on and it would be, you know, switching hats and having funny costumes and there'd be like uproar from that. So you'd add more to the fun of it because people are play, playing people. That makes sense. Yeah. It, it does. I also wonder what would happen if you staged this one outdoors? Yeah, that's another thing. You could, you could put it by like an old mill and that would be interesting or like in a hay field or something. And that would definitely add to the atmosphere of the play and the idea that we're talking about the elements. Knowing our luck, it would rain. Yeah, What's wrong and with then, rain? then <laughs> the watermelon would be happy. <laughs> he would, yeah. You could, like, what the weather happened to be would very much, I guess, uh, influence how it would play. And, and um, so, Stephen, what are what are your final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I absolutely agree with the last point, actually. That was one of my final thoughts. But, the, the, you know, the, the, there's more doubling to come, isn't there? And when, whenever I, you know, if I go to see a show and actors are doubling, uh, I just love that, you know, because it just shows the skills off so much. You know, e even if you go to the shows a lot, it's quite easy to sort of forget that somebody's playing somebody. You think, oh, well, they obviously just like that, you know. And the great thing about doubling is you, you're obviously in the, in the presence of, of, of craft and skill and virtuosity. And I, I love that when I go to see a show. So 
Um, so I definitely agree with that point. I think that's a really great point to make. Um, uh, the only other point was um, the musician point, because it did strike me uh, these long speeches. I mean, you know, long speeches, right? Unless it's a, you know, you've got a dagger in front of you or something, you know, or a hanky. Uh, you know, you have a play made of, of sort of 15, 20 line speeches, but he pulls it off. And I wonder if it's to do, it feels like learning a piece of music. It's really hard to do if you're doing a cold read. But it 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 seems those speeches do seem to be written with a sort of um, I don't I don't know enough about music to say something to do with phrasing. There's huge variety in there, which is frustrating when you cold read it because you think this sentence should end. Oh my God, it hasn't ended. But that pushes you somewhere else. You know, uh, it's uh, there's a flow to it. You know, there's a continuity to it. And ugh, there we are, I've frozen, haven't I? And we can still hear you. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I talking about flow? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we think we think of we think of of, of, of uh, speeches as sentences which kind of stop, and this is more like music. You know, this this is the, the experience of these is is uh, much more of a flow experience, and I'm, I'm really intrigued as you know as to how that works but i wonder if it's something to do with him being a musician yeah i mean i i think um there, there's a lot to that there's a flow to it but there's also a structure um so if i was reading this play and i was thinking where would you cut it's actually really hard uh to cut because the speeches they have one thought that flows into another and if you cut one thought out there's a sort of a jump feeling um that uh, Jupiter's first speech is probably the hardest to sustain interest in. Maybe he could have a PowerPoint presentation or something. Um, the, uh, or, or, you know, a dumb show going on in the background with gods fighting and weather happening and um, all the other actors uh, being gods temporarily. The, yeah, the, the two things about this play, firstly, that it's about it's about things people want and the things that and the things that they want are incompatible so i think to keep it alive on stage everyone has to know what they want and everyone has to want it very much uh and and mary report can play on those various wants like like an instrument um and the other thing is that um i i have maybe an absurd love for this play just because it's you know what i what i love about uh, about doing this is the time when the times when you find sort of commonality with these people in the past and these writers and these actors and these characters and this isn't a play about a historical king or a fictional battle or you know a, a biblical episode or something it's about the weather and that's that affects everything then and it affects everything now every everyone responds to it i mean yeah we're all locked up indoors but when we're not um we you know the the weather even then the weather still affects our mood and and our thoughts so i i and it it shows also what life was what sort of everyday life was like in the way that all these different people are reacting to the weather so that's that's kind of my final thought, I guess, uh, that just there's just it's kind of reassuring when you feel like people have had the same problems for 400 years. Um, so so uh, let's see any 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 thoughts from anyone else before before we before we stop. Well, um, thank you for being here and for and for helping read this play. I'm delighted uh, you know i think i think we've made good weather of it as they say well, and uh please and uh if you if you're listening and and you enjoyed this and you're still here uh first of all i'm gonna buy you a beer sometime if you drink otherwise i could get you like a cranberry juice or something um and uh don't forget to check out the full audio adaptations of these plays on the podcast and uh, if you like John Haywood, and 
increasingly I kind of do. If you like John John Haywood, there's quite a lot of Haywood's works uh, on our on our podcast and on our YouTube channel, and more to come. And it only remains uh, for me to once again thank our excellent room of readers, and to bid you good night. Good night.